okay in this video we will talk about the integration of service now with splunk okay so to do that what i have done is i have joined the service now developers program so which is basically free to join and the good thing is you will get your own instance to work with okay so i got my instance and which is madrid build service now so if i just show you my instance over here so this is my service now instance and if i just go to incidents over here so i just created a simple simple incident over here just just a test incident over here just to work with today now we will see today uh, how to ingest this data into splunk okay now to do that one what we'll do is today is today we'll be using an add-on from a splunk base called service now add-on okay splunk add-on for service now so what we'll do we will just go to google and search for splunk add-on for service now okay now we'll just go to splunk base first will be using this particular app today okay now this this app is built by splunk if you see it over here and the version we will be using is 4.0.0 okay so we will just download it first we will accept that license term then agree to download okay so let us keep it over here in our download folder now i will go to my my splunk instance so currently i am using a standalone splunk instance this is in my local laptop right so so to install it what we'll do is we will click on this manage apps gear icon over here okay which will take us to our our all apps page from there we will just install app from file we will choose the file okay and we will select the file which we just now downloaded over there okay and click on i'll just click on update app that is is there the app is currently not there in my local so so after after it uh, after it completed so i think it will ask for the splunk restart we will restart the splunk okay in between while it is restarting let us talk about how to install this particular app in a distributed deployment scenario okay now if you see it you, you will just try to remember this table or maybe i will just share this link in my video description as well if there also you will find it out so you can install basically in either in searched indexer and heavy forwarders currently universal forwarders it is it is not supported okay so in the in the search and and this particular add on has lot of feature instead of like like the the normal integration with splunk like where you will you will get your incidents problems other other data in in splunk apart from that you can do direct integration like maybe you can create incidents from splunk itself maybe in next videos we will try to see that one how to do that one okay but in this video we'll just try to concentrate on the normal integration where we'll just pull service now tickets mainly incident over here okay into our splunk instance okay so so this is this is the table basically which you need to remember now distributed deployment feature compatibility so here also here also maybe this table also i'll be i'll be sharing with you okay so this is this is little the distributed deployment over there so i think our splunk has been restarted okay we'll just click on apps we will click on this service splunk add on for service now okay so this is this is the default screen over here okay for this particular app where we have three menu options over here inputs configurations and search in search is just like you you can you will search in your in your index first we will go to configuration tab over here okay so in the configuration tab you are basically setting up the service now account over here okay and if you see there are three tabs over here one is the account and is that service now proxy proxy setup over here okay so here basically you can you can set it up your proxy servers as well and and the logging part like whether the the script which is basically pulling the data what kind of log you want you want only that error logs or debug logs or info logs whatever okay so you can you can define the logging level over here as well so first we will do is we will set up our service now account for that we will create add 
over here okay we have to give a account name over here okay so we'll give snow underscore test okay so url we have to give our service now url here right so if i just go to my dashboard so this is the url for my service now i'll paste it over here okay now we have to give the service now admin username and password now my service now username will be admin over here and the password i'll be giving my service now admin password over here okay i'll be clicking on add so after it saves okay so let us let us try to see from the back end what what file what file it is creating over there okay so for that what we will do is we will go to our splunk home etc apps this is the app for splunk service now right splunk ta this is ta for the technical add on okay service now snow we'll go to our local folder over here okay if you see it created now two files over there one is that service now account over here okay with the admin and the password and the url details okay uh, second one it has created is the passwords.conf okay so in the passwords.conf it basically saves the credentials whatever i have given whatever passwords i have given for my admin account okay in a, in a, in a encrypted format okay so we, we we set up our admin credentials over there right so now we do not have currently any proxy setup so we will not do anything over here and the logging level i'll just make it as info so that if we receive any error it will it will be shown up in my in my internal index okay so now the second thing we have to do is we have to go to the inputs over here okay and then we have to create or we have to basically enable that proper input over here now from the service now you can pull lot of data like if you see over here change request change task cmdb related stuff if i just go to the next page incident ticket problem tickets audit related stuff okay so for a, to give an example okay i'll just work with the incident part now i will click on edit over here okay so if you see the input name is incident already now the account i will be choosing this snow underscore test now this this collection interval this is the interval by which this this input job will run so i'll just give by default the 60 seconds okay now table to collect data from now whenever you want to pull incident data right so the service now table you want to hit is the incident so it will be by default automatically selected here and you cannot change this now this one now okay because for each and every kind of data input so there is a input defined over here even you can create a new input as well that time you want to you, you can select this this uh, from this drop down whichever input you wanted to create okay so you can create multiple incident inputs as well from here okay now excluded properties here you can basically say the comma separated list of list of database table okay or basically table columns you want to exclude from okay so so that those those details will not come to splunk so that that also you can include include here now time field of the table so this is important over here now each and every service now table right whatever i am talking about this incident table or problem table have a time field over there upon which this data so whenever you add some new incidents or update any new incidents that particular column will be always updated okay now based on that column only this this particular add on will be pulling the data okay so for for incident we will be updating as sys underscore updated underscore on now for different different apis there are different different field names default field names i will be providing a link in our i think let me let me see if i can get it for you here i think somewhere it is there set up the service now add on i think somewhere i i I'll, I'll just try to i'll just try to find it out and i will i will i will share that link as well so that you can refer it which will be, what will be the um, default 
field name over here even that if the default field name is not um, matching maybe in that case what you need to do you need to check with service now admin just to see whether this field exists or not because service now is highly customizable right so it may happen that this default field name also they have they have customized it okay so maybe it's better to check with service now admin what what field you need to use it over here okay now the start date i'll be providing so let me let me go back to my service now instance okay in between i just created another another incident over here here as well incident 003 so i'll just copy this time frame over here okay and i'll just paste it over here i'll just give it one day back so that we will we will pull all the incidents all the records from 9 september onwards okay 9 september 857 onwards now the id field again this is another id from that incident table based on which which is basically uniquely identifies each and every row of the table okay so by default it is sys id even i will be using sys id only over here so this is also another field which you should check from your service now admin which field you should be using it over here okay i'll just keep the default one because my service now i think will work with this one only now filter parameters over here you can give the filtering parameters like which if you want to just pull for a particular assignment group or, or for a particular incident those type of filter parameters as a key value pr you can give it over here okay and last the index where you will basically push the data so i'll just select main now for now okay i'll click on update over here okay after it gets updated okay so we we just updated the incident one right so i will enable it as well okay now before we check like whether it is pulling the data or not what i'll do is i'll just show you what file it created okay so we'll go to etc apps ts no local folder if you see previously you have seen it has created passwords.conf and ts no account.conf right now after configuring that input it created this inputs.conf okay with this details like we just configured the incident one right which account we have used which field basically the id field which indexed we are pushing the data and since when we are pulling the data okay and what is the time field over here okay with all this all these details now if everything goes fine it should pull the incident those incident records in our main index so let us check it out over here okay okay so now we'll do we'll go to our main index from here index equals to main okay let's pull us for last 24 hours now if you see it it it, it pulled up it pulled up those incidents records as well so and it created those those fields as well over here if you see okay and and if i just click on this incident i think there is, there is a field called number over here let me try to find it out number right so it pulled up three let, let's see whether it is pulling up two as well or not maybe when previously i was testing it out maybe it was already pulled that's why it is not pulling it up again so let us do one thing let us create a new incident and let us see whether whether this incident is getting pulled or not so i'll be getting creating this incident number four okay so incident four four here i'll just give a comment comment four here okay other stuff i'll just keep as is is i'll just click on submit now as this particular this particular input is running every minute right so let us wait for a couple of, uh, let for wait for one minute and we'll see whether this guy is getting pulled or not now if i just run the search again if you see it pulled up that record let, let's see by the incident number over here so the field name is number it should be somewhere here okay if what is getting pulled as well okay so th this is the main functionality of this service now add-on i think for other type of like 
problems other stuff the configurations will be similar right it's just like you're pulling the separate object from service now now i just wanted to show you another stuff over here if you face any issues over there right in during this add-on whether it is not pulling or anything first check it out this particular file under splunk var log splunk okay so it, it creates a file called splunk ta snow underscore main dot log okay check out this log file if it is showing up any error or not okay ideally if it is any like connection type of issue or something you misconfigured it will be it will be showing up over here as well okay now there is another aspect of this app which i was we just i just wanted to show you if you go to settings search reports and alerts okay and pull all the save searches for this particular add-on this add-on actually comes up with lot of save searches which is by default disabled in nature with these save searches are basically pulls all the details like user list some other list if you see cmdb ci list every list and it creates an input for that one if i just go to the second page if you see this particular save search is basically gathering all the user related information and creating this particular lookup okay so that you can use this lookups in your search queries as well but for that you need to enable this save search now you have to be careful when in your in, in your in your clustered environment because this save searches will be creating more search artifacts right so that means your search artifacts volume will be increasing so that means the clustering right because in clustered environment that, that search artifacts will be replicated across the cluster right so it may it may take some kind of memory that means some kind of performance can be hit over there okay so you have to be careful which information we need maybe, maybe according to that we we will just try to in, enable that corresponding safe search over there okay and and use it over there okay now there is i as i in my in my i think initially when i was introducing this particular app i told you there is another aspect of this app like you can create a ticket from splunk to service now as well i will try to set it up in my next video and show it to you okay see you in next video